tripod episode whichever one you're on uh my name is oh, ryan oh that's sick thank you for the introduction his name is ryan my that's name is powis from the tri pod my name Bye. is pod tri <laughs> jaren jaren ryan and powis everyone your nice. try hards that are the pod bringers um, the pod bringers yeah. pod bringeth pod taketh it's true, man. Taketh an hour of your time away. And, uh, <laughs> gives you an hour. No, because what you're doing should be sitting down with the lights off, listening to this, paying yeah. Fuedo's attention, fully immersed in the pod, because multitasking is really just continued divided partial attention. Everybody subscribe to our sister pod, the, the Tryhards uh, ASMR hour. Uh oh. I left, left something for our editors in the last one. Nice. <laughs> There's a little nugget there for you. Nugget? Cool. A little ASMR action. I'm practicing my radio voice. It's what we've been what we've been missing, man, really. Mm-hmm. Since our last pod, we said we wanted to um, get on to other people's different pods, and I've featured on right. three since our that's, last pod. That's, uh, that's almost unbelievable. We were That's... actually, we were talking about clones in a previous pod. I actually yeah. went on my clones pod. I went to the future, <laughs> nice. went on his pod. Jaren too is his name. I know it's not very original, but yeah. uh, went on his pod, killed the game. I think he's going to come onto our pod in the past. Okay. So right. basically Question. you have to go back. Actually, yeah, I think I remember him. I, I remember him being on the pod in the past actually so well, I, think I think that's actually true what happened is that he went on to a pod after we recorded it into the past and then right. rewrote history so he's actually replaced me i am him yeah so did jaren too also jump off of pizza on wheels oh god <laughs> or <laughs> why did we <laughs> Was that a simul? I think that's I think it, where our timelines diverged when yeah. I jumped off pizza on wheels in this timeline. <laughs> this is where we diverged. You created a rift. This, <laughs> this part of the podcast is called Great Ideas, uh-huh. where we revisit at least one okay, event. Okay, let me go through my logic here. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'll qualify. I was uh, quite inebriated. Give the layman's terms. Uh, set the stage. Tell the story. So Pizza on Wheels was this uh, rogue pizza operation that what it sounds operated like. in the church parking lot uh, next to the high school that we went to. Yeah. Uh, they charged about 25 to 50 cents less per slice than yeah. the cafeteria at school. Cat-killer. And the pizza was way better. It was. Anyway, we were under the influence of uh, some silly juice, and we... <laughs> uh, I won't say the other person in case he doesn't want me telling this story. But don't dox. Um, we, do, we don't dox was, here anymore. Powis has done we don't, enough. We don't dox anymore. But uh, I was on the top of this uh, portable. It was after hours. I think it was on a weekend. It must have been. Uh, it was. And yeah, it was definitely on a weekend. And anyway, we're on top of the thing. Uh, he this friend was trying to gingerly find a way down off of it. So he's, uh, I guess I just said he's a he. Wow, guys, I have male friends. He is trying to get down off of like a doorknob, something like that. Anyway, I have the brilliant idea to jump off pizza on wheels. My logic being that I've jumped off of playgrounds way higher than this in my time. Not taking into consideration that I was yeah. about grade four when my joints were still made of rubber. Yeah. And also had... Very thick cushioning in the form of like wood chips, not a cement parking lot. Mm. And so when I landed, uh, I basically, my knees buckled, I I crashed down. And uh, yeah, it looked like I was committing a Canucks related suicide because I was wearing my Canucks jersey. (laughs) Uh, That's about the time that those those were going around, you know. I mean, they had just, I think they were playing the Blackhawks in that series where they came, they we're up 3-0, Chicago tied it, and they won in Game 7. Anyway, right. Chicago had just demolished Vancouver in Game 4 to make right. it 3-1. So uh, Jaron was jumping to his pizza-induced doom. Basically. Minus the pizza. Minus, and then minus then the pizza and I the doom, I guess. for a week after. Normally, like, drunk injuries were like, I was like, oh yeah, I'd kind of like shake it off the next day. Yeah, this right. one, I was limping for like a week. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I... I'm very I'd, stupid. I climbed a tree when I was drunk and I fell out and separated my shoulder. 
So, oh shit! You know, I, I know the pain. I know what you're. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay, if we're playing this game, I bit a light bulb. <laughs> Yo, I forgot right. about that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one, of those, one of those little pinky ones. Yeah. Yo, did you get zapped? Came over me. There was a spark, but I don't know. <laughs> honestly, no. Okay, that's where the timelines diverged. Yeah, honestly, that's a there's a timeline where Powis is dead. <laughs> like straight up. Oh my lord! I love Jared's line after he lands. Uh, I'll replace the name with bro. He's on the ground and like the camera person on the because it got recorded this epic moment and the dude on the camera runs up. He's like, you all right? And the first thing he did, he's laying prone there. He's like, bro, don't jump. <laughs> so good. Like a true cuck. <laughs> looking out for the people. Amazing. Hot uh, start. Uh, Hot start. I think that was my second worst. Uh, shenanigan related injury the uh first being we were at grad camping oh snap and oh uh, that was a good one yeah i'll tell this i mean ryan was actually there right yeah. we we were on a pretty steep hill and people like to tell the story that i jumped off a mountain that's not what happened uh we were on a <laughs> yeah, steep. oh yeah no that is not what happened we were on a pretty <laughs> steep hill uh we're at the top of it and Ryan ran down it and he did it pretty gracefully. It was like pretty soft dirt pretty and well to, towards the bottom. He's picking up steam, but he has like some good form. You know, he's going sideways, like digging in a little bit, but he gets to the bottom. I'm like, Hey, if Ryan did it, I can do this. And like, you usually right about that. The yeah. worst part was that I wasn't even, I had maybe had like a beer or two beers. And like, whenever they were like, my parents were like, how drunk were you? I was like, I wasn't even, that's the worst part. Yeah. <laughs> and so I wasn't I, father. <laughs> I, uh, well, I kind of brought it on myself too, because I said that if anyone's going to get hurt on this camping trip, it's going to be me. And then I ran down this hill, uh, picked up speed at the bottom, like Ryan did, except my foot went so deep into this soft dirt that I couldn't pull my leg out in time. I tumbled, landed like collarbone, like shoulder first, rolled, and then kept running the length of the hill. Yeah. Got to the bottom. I was like, oh, I broke my shoulder. Broke my shoulder. Like seeing funny colors and stuff. And Actually. Then, uh, I yeah. swear I swear the dude moved in slow motion. He just, <laughs> I was standing there on the side of the hill and I just, I just watched him go by. And I swear he, he just he cascaded through the air. Just in slow motion, all the way over. <laughs> oh horrifying. Yeah. And then truly uh, horrifying. Luckily, on this trip where most people were having adult beverages, there was right. one person who didn't drink. And so yeah. he was able to drive me to the hospital, get an X-ray. Come back. Yeah, in a, <laughs> I was gonna say that's what I was gonna say. Nice. Yeah, for Come back in a slang and yeah. then have one of the most uncomfortable sleeps of my life. Oh, uh, I bet. It was cold. And I remember I shared a pillow with Parr, our director, where I lay this way for the... Uh, I laid perpendicular to Parr. Our heads yeah. were sharing a pillow <laughs> and we laid opposite directions from each other. That's uh, it was great. It was a nice bonding moment. Uh, Parr definitely said, he's like, I heard you making some weird noises in the night. I was super <laughs> uncomfortable. I was trying not to roll over at all. Yeah. So uh, That hasn't changed yet, Parr. <laughs> <laughs> Dude creates sound. <laughs> yeah. I make weird noises in my sleep. I've actually caught myself making weird noises where I wake up and I was like, what the hell was that? Oh my God. <laughs> I love, that was an amazing story. I hope I'm not railroading it by changing the subject. No, go for it. But that reminds me of an app I downloaded one time to capture my sleep talk. Oh, right. nice. So there's an app that like will only start recording once it hears stuff. And like, I got some good sentences out for myself i think i was like being jealous of gareth one time and i'm like in my sleep like of course gareth's gonna get a new car <laughs> like something, i'm like yo that was a clean sentence like where was i don't remember the dream that was close how i could have been it might have been Shit. I think it was before the great uh what if, that like, the, the Powis in your dreams is the Powis who died from eating the light bulb? <laughs> and you're so just getting a... You're just, the wires are getting crossed for just a moment while you're in the sleep realm. Well put. Bro. It's possible. Wires. It's possible. Bro, I don't know where my timelines diverged. Who knows? Maybe they're yet to diverge. The tree? Oh. Oh. The tree fall? 
No, that's run of the mill stuff. Uh, yeah, maybe yours is. You I just have a single it? timeline. Maybe it's possible. Makes sense for the straight man. What are you gonna just dox his sexuality? It's fucked How up. Dare you? I mean, that is on. Me. All right. Ten, we're going to have a 20 subscriber sexuality reveal. <laughs> so smash the like button. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, tw- 25 sub gender reveal and I'll just fucking pull out my dyscalculia on, <laughs> on video. <laughs> yes. I think it's been pretty ambiguous for the three of us. Like Jared's sharing pillows. Powers. That's not a sexual thing, dude. That's just intimacy in a non-romantic way. Yeah, sure, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. <laughs> We're giggling because Pardeep says he disses, he disses, he disagrees. He says yeah. it was romantic. There was candlelight. We were feeding each other grapes in the morning. What do you mean it meant nothing to you? <laughs> um, man. I think the times where I like basically shared a bed with Byron at, in Kevin's basement for like a year. Right. Like around the time where I was working at IKEA back in the day, right? And it was close to a friend's house, and we used to, <laughs> I used to go there after work. <laughs> Kev would already be on his way downtown. I would pregame outside my car, waiting for a cab. <laughs> <And> <laughs> go downtown, meet Kev there. We would come back. That's together. a move right there. Sometimes Byron would come back, and then I would go straight to work in the morning. Then we would do it again. And nice. That was, uh, that was my life for a while. You know? That's the degeneracy of, oh, the, yeah. of the early oh, yeah. 20s, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a different time. Jaren was to Kev's as Powers was to Jaren Cody's for a minute. Oh, there. yeah, when that's they right. they were living at the Cypress house, I would just pull up, fucking not even hanging out with the boys, just like, yo, I live in Delta and I want to party in van, so can I come drink at your house for an hour and then leave <laughs> sleep there? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> gonna leave a huge mess too bye <laughs> like a couple days like oh fuck then i started sleeping in my car outside the plate dude oh there was one time yeah that's that's uh that's that's one of my favorite pow timelines there yeah uh, that's where a different sleeping there, another, in your car. Di- another uh branch in the uh the timeline yeah. there for pow that's how you know that's how you know pow this powis is on the bad timeline <laughs> he <laughs> drove all the way to it's our confirmed house. And the best part was Cody was like, dude, you could have just slept inside. Why don't you just like knock on the door or something? And like, yeah. I would have been fine with it too. Yeah. But you know what? That's power. Bro's going through some, going through a time. Yeah. And that's what friends do, you know? Walk it happened, choices. dude. Walk to choices in the morning to take a thump. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like parked outside my two closest friends fucking house. I'm going to the department store, the grocery store. <laughs> hey, can I buy this bag of chips and drop trow in the fucking <laughs> cap room? <laughs> Thanks. That's, uh, I think that term was, I mean, I heard it from Kev. I'm not sure if he coined it or not. Drop yeah. trow? No, the thumper. Oh, really? The thumper. The thumper, the old, yeah. Uh, the old hangover poop. I certainly didn't. That uh, soul cleansing it. moment where all of the heinous things you put into your body the day before just come yeah it's like flying out drop something like does anyone smell poutine in here (laughs) dude there were times where oh god going back into the uh (laughs) the uh dungeon with some of these uh, i used to go to smokes poutine on granville street yeah and i would barely chew the stuff and then oh yeah oh i've seen it happen when i would have when i would have my morning vomit (laughs) It would come out like full of fries and shit. Dude, just like, my favorite. Did this guy chew last night? What did you do? Yeah. My favorite fucking five head galaxy brain moment with smokes poutine is uh, so I, w- I was out drinking with uh, with our previously mentioned buddy Byron and uh, and the boy Jaren here. And so we're having a good time. And then uh, at one point they just come up and find me and say, OK, we're, we're, we're going to sm- smokes. We're going to go get poutine. I, was like, Dude, oh. I can't eat anything there. And Byron's like, yeah, you can. You, I've seen you eat it before. And I was like, wait, has he? Like, has he seen me? And I was like, okay, let's go. And like, I'll, I'll like look at the menu. And we get there, and I'm like analyzing the menu. I'm like, okay, like what, what would I've eaten? Like, what is it? And I find one that's just like all veggies. It's like mushroom gravy and whatever. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. That must be it. That must be the one. So I order that. I'm like, okay, cool, sick. I, I didn't think I could eat anything. Get halfway through eating it, and I'm like, fuck, it's covered in cheese curds. Yes. <laughs> 
just no. so I thought I thought so hard about it. I was like, wait, uh, fucking like the the <laughs> meme with like the lady with all the fucking math symbols. I'm like, okay, which what's which poutine can I eat? Like yeah, um, yeah. Uh, mushroom gravy. It's got vegetables on it. Uh, yeah. uh, no sour cream. And it's covered in cheese, and I'm like halfway through eating, and I'm like fucking ah, like well, in for a penny, in for a pound. At that point, I finished it, and so you know, council will see. Yeah, (laughs) oh dude, don't tell, don't, don't, yeah, don't tell the higher ups, man. Got his membership revoked. Yeah, it's uh, it's currently in uh, in discussion. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't believe that one. Like, there's been times where I've eaten like a bite of something that's like obviously mayonnaise or sour cream based, and I'm like, oh, whoops. And then just like leave it at that. But I got halfway through this poutine before being like, wait, cheese isn't vegan. Yeah. That's called booze, 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 (laughs) booze. Yeah. Make me do things, bro. Not the clearest frame of mind going into that situation. And that place is always just watching those late night food spots. And yeah, just the characters that you see, and just the absolute shenanigans, and just feeling bad for the employees. It's like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, my <laughs> just goodness. like oh man, <laughs> yeah. you, you want to talk about essential workers? I hope <laughs> yes. I hope that minimum wage gig is worth it. Oh jeez, geez, man. For some, it has to be. Oh, it's oh, a good my. story. Okay, 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 I'm, I'm okay. Sure, okay. great story. Listen, yes, downtown is popping, but so is Delta North. Okay, I've got a story, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so one time, I don't know, maybe myself and Tanner are going to Don's. I think we, I don't know. I, I, I think Tanner was there. Maybe we walked. Pretty sure we were drinking a bit. But like, Are you sure about this story? Like you, you're not sure of anything so far. <laughs> I, I, we were the stars. <laughs> we were the stars. We were there and three uh, dudes that were a year old. Oh, which, okay. Is stars the... Um, Sorry to just fucking derail you. Stars is the one that did, it kept changing like all the time, right? Stars. It changed its name all the time. What are you talking about? The bar. No, dude. It was called Cheers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, There's sorry, 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 sorry. It was called Puzzle. I'll stop shouting over your story. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, please. It was very welcome. Um, <laughs> anyway, so imagine Scott 72nd and 120th mcdonald's sure okay that was one of that was one of the spots in delta 10 years ago oh yeah uh tanner and i are in there getting some making some mcgang bangs junior chickens and uh hell yeah double cheeses and maybe stacking five patties because i love to fucking flex like that oh my god what a man um the podcast is officially uncucked again yeah honestly yeah these three dudes that were a year older were in there and they went to burns you and you know when you're hammered you're friends we weren't necessarily friends but yeah homies (laughs) and one of them was particularly gone we'll call him doug and doug was like hey can i get something goes up to the counter can i get something sure they go to the back to get it and he just reaches over the counter and starts grabbing fistfuls of McChicken sauce. <laughs> like three, four, five fistfuls of the shit. Comes, sits down with Tanner and I, starts cracking them and sliding Ew. them into his mouth. No. One by one. Rip, Ew. slide, drink. One, two, <laughs> ten, thirty three, uh. thirty four. I watched him put thirty five down. And then he's like, I'm going to the bathroom. Yeah, I fucking bet. <laughs> Goes to the bathroom, comes out with the toilet paper dispenser from the wall in his no. hands, launches it at the table. It hits one of the shandos that like gets le- gets unclipped, falls, glass shatters everywhere. Oh, and we God. all split out there like freaking cats on a falling Christmas tree, dude. Oh, we just, that's awful. It, <clears throat> straight. I don't know how to describe it. Other than what? Uh, <laughs> straight vandalism. Headery, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, absolutely. To the to the nth degree. Hour dawn. Shout outs to those employees that swept. <sighs> yeah, you want to talk about hard work. Fucking <laughs> yep. Jeez. I feel like lie. you get good stories working at places like that. True. It's the only silver lining. Yeah, yeah you also learn your uh uh standards. Yeah, like, yeah, a job yeah, I bet. I don't want to do it ever again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah Meanwhile, someone in America is like, hey, dude, hey, 
I really love to clean up shattered glass and fucking McChicken puke. <laughs> hey, man, right. if that's your calling, dude, there is the, there's always demand for those workers, that's man. True. If that's, that's what you love, true. you will never work a day in your life. Well, I mean, you will, but you won't, you know? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Crazy shenanigans. It makes me wonder what the what the young guns are up to now. But I mean, probably similar. We're not very different from the people that were before us. That's in terms of the shit that we did. I'm sure it just like changes context a little bit, but yeah. I guess. And we aren't out of the woodwork, man. We're going to see some absolute <laughs> scenes if clubs ever reopen. Oh, I was just thinking about that yesterday, oh dude. My I was God, dude. earlier today. I honestly like, I'm not I don't know what it's going to be like. I want I want to be there. <laughs> I do too. I did that dance floor though. Oh my goodness, the dance floors are going to be popping off. Oh my god, dude, it's I just want to I just want to be a fly on the wall, but well, a fly on the wall with multiple pints of beer, but yeah. like <laughs> you know like I I absolutely want to hit bars once they're back open. You dude, know like Granville like, Street is going to be a free for all. There's going to be people banging in the street. Yeah. It's going to be it's going to be, be at insane. least one couple banging in the street. I'm yeah. going to call it right now. It's nice. going to be like a festival. Yeah. But like on a street yeah. Someone just banging by a province. The thing, like, numbers of down. STDs are going to go up dramatically. Yeah, we're on to a new pandemic. It's syphilis, baby. Yeah, oh, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of pregnancies, <laughs> a lot of babies born. Nine well, there's a uh, just 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 like recently, like in the past um, couple months, there's been the a spike in births, the COVID babies. Oh, yeah. Because uh, like one quarantine started, and some people oh, yeah, were right around now. Yeah, yeah. banging. Mush. They were bored and banging. They're like, hold on, I can't stay alone with you. I need someone else to keep me company. Let's break right. another person. Uh-oh. Uh oh. <laughs> this will Yikes. save our marriage. Yikes. Um, don't do that. <laughs> the, the best logic there ever was. Yeah. Never works. We fight all the time, so let's put another dependent and an incredible amount of stress on our relationship. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Why did you do this to me, mom and dad? <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, but no, that's going to be <clears throat> fucking unfathomable. I, I, yeah. I'm not able... I've seen some wild nights downtown, like a few New Year's is that it's just like, yo, this is a oh, yeah. fucking carnal fucking fest. Like, yeah, when the pint is absolutely sardined wall to wall, there's no way <laughs> they're fucking uh, honoring the fire code. Yeah, people. yeah. There was a fire. You're not getting out of there in time. Yeah, you're dying. You're dying on the D floor, <laughs> dude. Honestly. I'll die on the D floor. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the I'm, a, I'm, a so, I'm a soldier, baby. I'm a soldier. I'm gonna die on the D floor. Honestly, <laughs> die happy, bro. Dude, <laughs> how do you think the fire started on the dance floor? Oh, Somebody God. was just getting down. The man on Sparks New Year's like, was just like, yo, fancy feet. The man with the the hot, the man with the hot haunches, hot, the the hot, hot high tops, hot. It's like, I promise I'm not trying to grind on you. I'm just trying to get to the washroom right now. <laughs> That's actually how I met your mother, kids. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying Honestly. to get to the bathroom. I accidentally grinded on yeah. the butt. And we both And liked it. we fell in love. That's your mom gave story. me a sloppy toppy. In the... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I had a... Bit the bathroom of the pint idea. in downtown Vancouver. If there's any ladies that are interested in being single moms... Uh, hit me up. <laughs> Holy fuck. That's fam famously something that women commonly want is to be single moms. That's, yeah, I mean, I, I bet they're you like unicorns. But if you're out there, yeah. hit me up. <laughs> wow. Like what a, what a, a, what a gift giver. I really, I, I'm not doing it for free. Let's get that shit straight. Let's get that straight. Right. Because women right. can sell their eggs, right? So De cool deadbeat dad women. for hire. Uh, yeah. yeah. I won't even, good. you don't even have to have sex with me. I'll just sell my sperm. Oh, yeah, I'm less interested in this. Now. Be a, a, a contractual <laughs> absent father. Yes, it's uh, you know, like you, you get around to like contract season, you got to renegotiate your terms to be an absent father. Otherwise, you're going to be in the kid's life. That's like and they're some... like shit. Okay, I'll give you, I'll give you a deal. I'll give you whatever you want. Just don't ever meet this child. Yeah, yeah I don't know if I can no, do that. You know, <laughs> no like the nature of being a cock. I feel like I would just, it would just be Damn. too much of a mystery. Like, yo, there's a mini version of me out there. Yeah, man. That's wild. And then I would send a message just telepathically and then try to take over the world. Then you're breaching contract. Oh, that's how you take over the world, dude. You create them. They're like sleeper cells and they're right. out there. There's so many of them out there and then all you do is you activate their uh what's it? Neuralink Tesla Their chip? frontal yeah. nodeplex. 
Frontal node plex. Nice. Exactly. They're and hypnotic then, and uh, <laughs> Yeah, you basically you use them to go do whatever bidding. Uh, I mean, I don't. Yeah, that that plan makes perfect sense to me, dude. There's no missing parts. It's uh, sign me up. Crazy. <laughs> I'm here to take over the world and implement love and understanding by Oof. force. Yeah, is that wow. a dictatorship, Ryan? Tell me about Alexander the Great, because <laughs> someone told me that he was actually a decent dude, and apparently he like took over. So, dude, I met him the other day. He's I mean, cool. like. Like, you got to take all that sort of stuff with a grain of salt because, like, who wrote all the things we know about Alexander the Great? It's a bunch of people who revered him, right? So, like, maybe he was a good dude. Maybe he wasn't. All I know is that that level of imperialism uh, and subjugation, like, I mean, I'm not too convinced that he's that great a dude. Maybe he was interpersonally nice, but we don't know, man. It's basically legends to us. Honestly. He was great at conquering shit. Yo, that that he was, yeah. He, he was, was definitely he a, a, a brilliant people, mind. Right? He just like let them live, like he let the queens live and like marry the queen one time or something. On some Daenerys shit. Yeah, I mean, there's like there's like a bunch of different accounts of things like that he did and everything, but like I mean, dude was also uh, definitely full homo. So oh, any of the any of the marrying of the queens was political gains. Pretty much mm. is, is is widely understood. There's, there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of um, uh, I guess whitewashing of history and stuff like that. A lot of uh, gay erasure, right? They they try and leave that part out of uh, out of a lot of people's history who were right. definitely you know LGBTQ plus whatever. Especially they, the Greeks. I was just thinking. That. Yeah, I mean it was like commonplace. It was yeah. it was it was normal. So a, a thing with the Romans, uh, I might be talking out of my ass. Uh, pun not intended. Um, but in Rome. Uh, it was uh, it was okay like homosexual relations was okay as long as you weren't the bottom right the the bottom <laughs> in like the 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 gender uh, balance in the relationship didn't matter it was the bottom who was the lesser person right like i i read i read this recently uh i don't know i i, I think that's kind of fun <laughs> you're my cherry pie cool drink <laughs> Feel so, so good. Put it in your brown eye. You're my cherry pie. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, that is interesting. Like, but yeah, uh, they did. They didn't care about the you know men could love men. It's cool, man. Just women could love women. Fucking bottom. All right. Yeah, pretty much. Right. right. No son of mine is getting fucked in the ass. There's a <laughs> there's like a pro bottom rights rally. <laughs> maybe maybe man who knows tops have been doing too much to keep us down yeah. for all this time like i asked you what you wanted what the fuck <laughs> this man. is gonna tie into our uh yeah. sexuality reveal tops are the oppressors <laughs> yeah <this. laughs> we need we need 19 more subscribers before we do our are we gonna do uh reveal? top or bottom reveal <laughs> Dude, that's that's got to be after sexuality that's, reveal. That's the for next sure. level. Yeah, we got to get to thirty yeah. subscribers, and then we'll do that. Thirty subs. We'll tell Oof. you which one. Nice. That's worth it. Yeah, it's a mystery. We get to thirty subscribers, and then we tell one of the subscribers, and hope that they start an alchemic reaction by spreading the data. <laughs> I don't really know what you mean by that. I mean. Okay, get this though. Go get ahead. this Th- 35 sub uh we get the 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 sub way sandwich order reveal oh! right we, we we release our go-to subway sandwich orders Dude. only at 35 subs though that's remaining a secret until then that Yo. was uh that reminds me of something my brother told me recently he uh he made his instagram bio his subway order <laughs> and then uh i think his uh <laughs> His work was like, yeah, you can't have this. I feel like this is going to be your professional account. Why? <laughs> or you got to like make a professional account. I'm like, this is hilarious though. What? That's that's fun. What a, what a, what a bunch of suits. Am I right? I mean, honestly. The these fat suits, cats at the top, in, they are just out of touch. Business comfortable, stretchy dress clothes. Makes me sick. People out. You know. But. If a man can't publicly state his preferred Subway sandwich order, then what society do we live in? 
it's a Honestly. pretty messed up society to be frank yeah uh, yeah that's not a world that i want to be living in you know, I, it, it's actually really cool. In uh, in ancient Rome, um, everybody was just public about their Subway sandwich order. Right. Uh, they just, yeah, they just said it uh, out loud. Everybody knew about it. They weren't, they, you know, they didn't have subscribers back then. So they had no reason to keep their Subway sandwich order under wraps. I see. Um, right. well, so they just, just they were just the out loud and proud. That everybody knew if you were, you know, a, a, a Genoa salami kind of guy or if right. you were, you know, a falafel dude. You know, it's uh, crazy that they didn't have sweet onion chicken teriyaki back then. Yeah, yeah. They, they haven't that, made their way to Japan yet. Yeah, that's actually probably the biggest gain they got from the Silk Road, the trading with the East, uh, uh, is they brought back the the sweet chicken, uh, sweet onion chicken teriyaki. Uh, that really, thing like became popular on like name alone. I mean, also it was it was one of Jared's chicken. fucking picks of the day, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was on his list. Back before he, uh, yeah, and you, you know, know, the funny thing is now Jared's on a list. So, oh! you know, that's, <laughs> speaking of his list, <laughs> oh, damn, son. Yeah, what uh, a fall from grace! What a oh. fall from grace! What a weird situation, though. It's just a dude who got hired because he lost a bunch of weight from eating Subway every day because he stopped eating a burger and fries and pop every day, like. Yeah, like the, 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 he was a weird dude to begin with. Like, yeah, did, like, he, did he like even? Th- there was never talk of like exercise or anything, right? Uh, I think I think they like it, they must there must have they been folded something. it in at some point. But yeah, like initially it was just that he ate a veggie delight six inch sub every single day for lunch, which I mean and, is still not great for. Him. No, it's not. It's just that it it was better than what he used to do, which was eat a burger, fries, and pop like a like a fast food combo meal every right. single day for lunch. And right. like somebody who's doing that, like something's already wrong. Like they, they, these are red flags. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah. Who? I mean, they, they, there's no way, there's no way to say that that's just you know uh, uh, telegraphing that he's a, a pedophile, right? That, that's, <laughs> it's a jump to make, but like you know, keep an know, eye man. on him, maybe. <laughs> Those veggie delights. You, uh, yeah. <sighs> Subway order says a lot about a person. That's why Jeevan had it in his bio. I do, Actually, I do. Though that's why I always take first dates to Subway, so I can judge them based on their Subway order. Yeah, you know. Okay, sick is Honestly, I can I can sort of get behind it. I can <laughs> sort of get behind it. What is the best place to take a first date? Hmm. Uh, I don't know, like a park or something. Yeah, for me, it's sure. the like somewhere. Like I used to think going out for like drinks or for dinner for a first date was a good shout. Yeah, yeah, but. There's like a lot of investment. I mean, financial for sure. And then otherwise to doing that, I prefer now to save that for like maybe second or third. Yeah. Um, yeah. That makes sense. Right. You, you want like a, like a, a, a safe, neutral kind of yeah. low key spot to yeah. start with. Like I mean, I say that I don't think, I think I've always gone for drinks on our first date. I but. think going for, like grabbing a coffee and going for a walk is a good right. go to for me. The Actually, no, I've, done, I've definitely done that. Yeah. The trade off with that Flex. is um, you don't get as much like eye contact. Yeah, I've had dates. <laughs> the, eye uh, contact and what? You lose eye contact when? Going for walks. When you nut. <laughs> you never, I look, I look never away keep right eye contact. You, you, see, you see things, or you both see things that you didn't want to see. <laughs> <laughs> I keep it's, my phone uh, right by me and just fucking turn on the front camera and look right at myself. <laughs> <laughs> It's fucking intense. I thought you were off that. It's black and white. <laughs> no. No no climax? Well, <laughs> wow, dude. Broke his own streak. A guy needs to do what a guy needs <clears throat> to do. Feel me? <laughs> I'm on the... Um, but yeah, cool. I appreciate those takes. I personally will uh, take my first dates to a float tank. <laughs> and try to... That's a weird it. one. Because Ascend. are you just not supposed to talk? Yeah, you're in a, in a float tank? tank. And you're not in the <laughs> same one? Can you float with another person, I wonder? I'm going to find out. <sighs> but I hope that we can just connect on the Sivinian plane. Right, right. So you're, you're just like going straight for your like kind of kind of spiritual are, shit right off the bat. Are you psychic like me? Can <laughs> you connect to the dwarven? Fair. I mean, like, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna weed out the ones that uh, that aren't gonna mix anyway. So I can get behind it. <laughs> Strong brands actually, that's have actually, enemies. Dog. That's actually not a bad show. Yeah, yeah. Save yourself the time. Cut to the chase. 
then we get out we're just like hey like all right <laughs> that's why you feel I, that in I, there i i i I, 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 I definitely it. felt it in there <laughs> take them to a rave where it's really loud flashing music a lot of people uh <laughs> substanced out uh you what? know i can't hear you what you look great today what <laughs> 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 all right second half of the podcast let's go sicko mode boys let's do it oh, i wish i had a follow-up for that i don't i don't really know i was hoping to get i was gonna get so psyched we'd just jump into a sick-ass topic it'd be our best ep ever but i came up short we hit, I came we up were, short. We barely scratched the surface of fucking date jetties, but like that's true. That's true. There you go. Great, great topic. About, great topic. What about mini golf? Ooh, that's a good call. It's a good I'm call. Down. Mini golf is Thank a lot you. of fun. Yeah, I just wonder if my competitive nature would come out. My I mean, it's a good way to like let a person know what you're like. I'm not losing to some girl, okay? <laughs> right? Wait, shit. Exactly. We didn't do sexuality reveal. I'm not losing to some person. Nice. <laughs> some gender non-binary who knows man i mean like I, I i don't even know yet i've never been on a mini golf date with another man like maybe that would awaken something in me I what have... if you go on don't a, knock until you tried it a platonic date with a dude but it just turns romantic what if it like awakens that's a beautiful love story is what that is that'd be really hot something to- <laughs> <laughs> I think I hope, about it all the time. Bro, you want to go to the hot tub? <laughs> yeah, sure, from? bro. I hope this is not thing in me. What is that? Oh, the dean in community. He sees like a picture of like a dude in a Dalmatian. Right, suit, right, yeah. He has like a Dalmatian fetish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a great one. Community. Um, yeah, I'd love to take a first date paintballing. That's. These are genuinely fun ideas you're coming up with here. Actually, <laughs> I, I kind of want to date you. Yeah, <laughs> keep looking at the camera in your face. Let me see those moons. Oh my god, he's so handsome. Why are we marketing this pod around Jaren when it could be around Ryhard? I mean, I have gotten some. This podcast is a triple Ryan threat, okay? Pretty. About Ryan being pretty? Yeah, I've shared a couple of his stories for tripod promo, and the comment I got was, "Wow, you and your friends are so pretty." And I was like, "Wow." I mean, I th- that's just the truth. That's. Be. We're, we are we need to be aware of this. This is part of the this is part of the appeal of the pod. Know your worth, kings. Straight. Know your worth, kings. Yeah. And then this is where the last female listening logs. Yeah, off. honestly. <laughs> Fucking females. Maybe they want to see. Now that they're gone, yeah. this is now an incel kings. pod. <laughs> yeah. I don't need no gal. We're no longer allowed to talk no, about dates because girls won't date nice guys like us. Wait, yeah. no. <laughs> I was about. I was about to say. <laughs> have you have you guys ever said that unironically in your life? What? What's yes, that? I have. I'm, I I appreciate your honesty, Palace, because I so. hate to admit that I you know when I was a teenager Yo. might might have uh, dabbled in a, a little bit of that justification bullshit. Oh yeah, like the nice guy. Why don't they date? Oh, me yeah. Stuff? oh, oh yeah. yeah. I have to for sure. Oh yeah. I was like nineteen. Feel, it feels bad. That's a painful memory. <laughs> but I mean, that's when you realize, like, hold on. Am I being a nice guy to try and get right? Exactly. Yeah. Am, am I, I actually nice, nice? Guy for the sake of it? <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. yeah. when you're nice for the sake of it, stuff starts falling in your lap like snow, baby. But when you're dude, that's nice true, man. The yeah. Face of it. Yeah. Ugh, get away from me, thirst. I can smell your thirsty stank. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a a pretty obvious uh, uh, road to success when you actually figure it out. But it turns out if you are actually nice. Yeah, yeah, like it becomes way easier. Conditionless uh, to make people interested niceness. in you. Turns yeah. out the solution to being an incel is to become a vol cell, and then you start to attract people into your life. Nice. What's a vol cell? See, Voluntary so celibate. Oh. <laughs> I feel like okay. So wait, is incel so, involuntary celibate? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Oh, that's what it is. Okay, but. But so, uh, so Jaren says the word Valsa here. So a, a way that the, in, in the incel community, they like to differentiate themselves a lot between like different reasons they're an incel or different incel sub communities where they'll just put a word before the word cell 
And then like they're that like so like guys who who are incels because they're they're just so smart are like brain cells and like uh, oh, no. uh, so like or, or this that the other no. right uh, so like um, there's uh, one for uh, relevant to Jaren just saying a, a cell word here uh, there's a lot of Indian dudes who will call themselves curry cells no uh, way <laughs> yeah no this is this way. is this is one hundred percent a thing. Oh, um, and so I'm just thinking that Jaron just attributed the word Volcel. I guarantee you that already means something. And I, I just, right. I want to know what it is. Well, what I'm going to actually, I'm going to look it up. Volcel? Curcel? That's just, it's just, it's too wordy, you know? And what are they claiming that because they're Indian people don't want to date them? Oh no, actually Jaron's straight up. Yeah, Volcel is voluntary celibate. So. Oh shit. I mean like I would. Hell yeah, dude. Why do you know so much about the incel community, Jaron? <laughs> Uh, because I was one. Okay, okay, okay. I literally I went from Damn. being an incel. <laughs> I was an incel. Dude, I, was, I, was, I, I, I I've been an, I've been an, an incel for a few hours at a time. You know, like <laughs> yeah, I was an incel. Cause that's the life. longest I ever go without having sex. Uh, a couple cocktails. I'm and then I'm we're, very we're much joking. Little decision at a nightclub later. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you ever been an incel at the end of the night at the bar? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, too many times to count. <laughs> Uh, too many times to count last call like <clears throat> anyone <laughs> <laughs> like literally the lights come on you're like oh no Swallow you gotta you gotta work fast <laughs> 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 and i'm sure they're doing the same thing on the other side like yeah. ooh, okay i guess we're we go. dance that's why I like we're just uh we're just it's just this podcast is a few chad cells living our lives you know Dude, What's a Chad when I worked cell? at a nightclub i was a chad thinking, incel i'm guessing a chad oh, cell chad cell must be a thing Chad cell. Okay, so a Chad cell is okay. We got some Urban Dictionary going here, which is got to be the place to go for this. Oh, it has to. All right, Chad cell. A newly discovered hybrid in, uh, form of incel. Chad cells are different from your average incel because they could possibly have any woman they want, but usually channel their <laughs> obsessions into one person specifically. Chad cells are typically found at the gym with other Chad cells, where they are usually known to call each other bro. Mm. Fuck boys. Shit. Mm-hmm. Chad cells are nice guys and typically become enraged when they are rejected, citing it's not their fault when nobody wants to hook up with them. Right. And then we got the 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 uh, example here. Derek is such a Chad cell. He's hot and he could get anyone he wants, but his personality is shit. That's why nobody would fuck him. Derek <laughs> has become involuntary celibate. So there you go. Like there you go. For a little while, I was like, damn, boys, we're Chad cells. But then it just got into all the negative parts of it. Right. Which was actually was basically the whole thing. I just liked it when I was saying that we were Chads because we're cool dudes. But right. I think it's probably best that I don't use any of this language to describe us. That's true. <laughs> it's, it's all bad. Ryan, do you know what caused your evolution from that nice guy mentality into whatever you have going on now uh probably literally like the development of my brain like i probably just grew up a bit and Mm. got a little bit less selfish because it's selfish you know not giving people enough uh respect as the people who they are but like treating people as other people instead of uh parts of your life you know crazy yo it's just it's just perspective right You, you get older and you just you know, have enough experience to see things in better light, you know, same, same as like your opinions on all sorts of things change all the time, hopefully for the better. True. Uh, yeah. Jared, did you, uh, have like any memory of you were once a nice guy and then you stopped identifying um, like that? Any clear moments in your life's history that it wasn't really like a lightning bolt moment. I think right. it just was like a gradual kind of evolution as yeah. I matured a little bit. Interesting. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the mentality of like, I'm nice. Why isn't this getting me anything? Right. I, yeah. Like that. I realized I had to shed that pretty quickly. Right. If, right. Yeah. Because it's just, it's not an attractive quality to have. It's, oh, no, it's, 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 it's awful. A shit, it's a shit quality to have. Like you're never going to attract anybody yeah. with a mentality like that. Yeah, and it's also like realizing that being nice is like, like that's what you're supposed to do. Like that's yeah. like that's the base level zero. You're always supposed to be nice. You're not doing anything by being nice. You're just like that. You're always supposed to be nice. Right. <laughs> you don't get anything out of it. You just be nice. 
Yeah, and that's it's a way of being, really. And then yeah. you become more... I think it really ties down to becoming more comfortable with yourself, too. Oh, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Like, Tons of it is insecurity, right? Yeah, like being like being nice just for the sake of it and not expecting anything from it is... Yeah, it just becomes a way yeah. of living, really. Yeah. I, I, so, like, I can't think of anything that really um, uh, kind of sparked that particular uh, change. But I know that, like, uh, related to that uh, and, and the insecurity of youth and uh, adolescence and all this is that I definitely used to be, like, reasonably jealous when it came to relationships and stuff like that. And once I was in, um, like, a more adult, healthy relationship, that just kind of went away. Because it was like, oh, wait, no, I, I get it, right? Like, this person's with me because they love me and choose to be with me. Like, why am I, like, jealous uh, of, you know, anyone else, right? Like, if they wanted to be right. with that person, they'd, they'd go for that person kind of thing. But, you know, like, that just, all that took was, like, a bit of healthy perspective. And it was like, oh, wait, no, this doesn't make any sense. Right. It's kind of challenged your ideas that you sometimes might not even realize you have. That's a crazy point. That's very mature. I hope Paulus, so. do you have any memories about? Paulus, do you, do you have any particular memories had, of like I when you kind of feeling... might have reached this level of maturity? Like, oh, I, I, I'd love to hear from you. Oh shit! Sick. Well, <laughs> yeah. thanks for asking. Bro. You're welcome, man. Anytime. I, I always think about what I could ask you instead of just interjecting with my own uh, own experience. I never do that too much. Let's just say <laughs> that my experience was tap one red deal three damage. For those uninitiated, it was a lightning bolt moment. <laughs> um, it's a magic card chair. So, I had a feeling. I had a feeling. Basically, I was. It's a magic card, you simpleton. <laughs> yeah, just call me simp. In simp. I am a vol cell. You simp cell? I am an incel. <laughs> <laughs> this is canon. Jaren is a vol cell. <laughs> this is canon. Actually, though, guy's got an Sorry, we're disrespecting power right now. Legs. Um, yes, bastards. Sorry, bro. Anyway. <laughs> So yeah, no, I was, long story short, I was beaten out of that mentality. I was just like, nice. yo, I'm nice to this person and she's going to be my significant person because I'm nice to her. Yeah. And then she was just like, mm, no, yeah. no, no, <laughs> in very spicy ways. And then I was like, you know what? I don't think I want you involved in my life at all then because yeah. Sure. Just, That's the scientific the method in action, man. <laughs> and then as soon as I pieced, it was on, but like, you know, yeah, it's, it's, uh, been there. As soon yeah. as you release the need, it just let the rain. Sorry. Yeah. Even off key, fuck. But yeah, thanks for asking. Uh, cool. It's a beat down. I just know that, uh, in my adult life, I have just, uh, never tried to play any sort of games with that bullshit. No, nope. just no, screw that. I'm just honest from the get go. And, you know, be. if people are going to dick around, then it's not worth my time. You know, well, fuck that. I was talking about it on the last pod. That's why I try and lay it out like, yo. Yeah. If you're not interested, don't ghost me. Just tell me you're not interested. And there was a situation that happened with me recently where that happened, where yeah. I was kind of like in limbo with this person. Right. And basically I was like, next time I see this person, I'm just going to lay it out. Like, are you interested? Are you not? Like, I don't yeah. want to be wasting my time kind of thing. And then they reached out like, yeah, they were dating somebody a little bit more seriously right. and that they, and like, we still are in contact and all that. Oh, sure. No. Yeah. Like not super. Speaking of cucks, am I right? Oh <laughs> Jeez. My God. Get a it's load like, of this guy. Wait, get a load of this guy. <laughs> well, I think I was like, I went into this, this situation thinking I was ready to date sure. again. And I think I put so much of my happiness into the other person's hands Ooh. that they could never live up to that. Like I was fulfilling, sure. I was fulfilling myself over the last, I don't know, while. Yeah. And then I basically, I stopped doing the things that got me to the dance is what I was saying. Like, you know, I was exercising regularly. I was doing things to take care of myself. Yeah, uh, yeah, like yeah. self care, self love, whatever woo woo shit you want to call it. <laughs> but um, I guess not really woo woo. I just had, was trying to fucking deflect from uh, calling it what it is. Maybe but, like ooh woo, you know, like <laughs> back to the yeah. insult shit. A little bit ooh woo, you know that little <laughs> yeah, that little maybe. face, little face. But, the weebs uh, are always typing. I kind of got away from those things because I was on like I was basically waiting for that person to. 
like message me back like oh right. what are they thinking like are they interested in what i'm saying blah 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 yeah. and i don't like texting i don't like getting to know a person over text messages Same. i fucking hate it because i've been I've, i think i've said it on the pod before but i've been told i'm a mean texter <laughs> because i use punctuation and i <laughs> i have to use emojis all any I, like Whatever the reason, like, I don't like getting to know a person over text. It sucks. Yeah, that's right? fair, man. And then when you can't meet the person face to face, I'm living in this time where I'm like, I just want to get to know this person and like, let it move right. along. I was trying to control the situation instead of letting it happen organically, instead of doing me and realizing that by doing me, that's going to be more attractive to that other person. And Shit, by, dog. you know what I mean? And like, it's, we were talking about that, like, you don't want to stink of desperation kind of. Thing, oh yeah, for right? sure. Whereas like I was definitely you were chasing the dragon. I was chasing yeah. the dragon. Your exactly. energy field changed from like, yo, I'm a blissful fucking entity that's like yeah. all about yeah. growth to being like, yeah. hey, I mean, like, are you trying to fucking suck my penis with your mouth? Okay, I mean, <laughs> like it wasn't quite that. It wasn't and, that, quite and that's, that and that's and that's why I just that's why I I'm just honest from the get go. You know, I just tell him like, are you looking to suck my penis with your mouth? <laughs> your and I, I see it. I see it as a form of respect that I'm willing to be that honest and upfront with them. Honestly. Right off the bat, you know. Well, I mean, I'm joking. The the tricky Some... part too was like I think I uh, <laughs> yeah I mean it it was a learning experience because yeah coming through the other side of it like I got to a point where I was basically like I just want to know one way or the other like are you interested so I know if I should uh, invest some energy into this or right. are you not interested so I can move on and go back to doing me and. It's taken me a couple months to kind of like get back on track. Yeah. And that just made me realize like I can't take away from the things that are making me happy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I can't take those away from myself for right. for another person because then I'm not. Right. It's like that cliche where it's like you want two whole individuals who come together and create a partnership. You don't want to be looking for the other person to complete something where you have like a void in yourself. Right. so spiritual dude no but they, they make sense makes sense right like yeah you you, you want to you want to be like fully fully on your shit yeah pod listeners might not know this ryan might not know this but jaren and i have like a crazily linked girl timeline actually it's unca it's very very odd that like if something's going <laughs> elaborate on yeah us, like for example there was a time maybe 400 or 450 days ago that like yeah. we both found significant many significant people right. started seeing people or whatever and we were both like holy shit this is it this is sick yeah like yo we both found gfs or bfs perhaps i what mean like that feeling? that's a that's a thing right that like when when two men you know live together for a long time their girl cycles start to match up the sync up you know yeah the, 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 you sync up or something it's just a it's widely recognized phenomenon dude it was crazy and we were both like oh this is it and then we would have like showdown talks like yo don't know if this is it and we were both at the same time like oh someone's got to pull the plug i wanted it to be it right, right. but well yeah again yeah, fair i also wasn't ready right. i think same same. As I long as you're like, like, as long as you're coming out of these things with like a gaining perspective or learning something absolutely. new, either about yourself or other people, like that's, that's good. And then just absolutely. be, be a better person and a better partner next time. And yeah. you know, it's, that, this is how it goes. Even in that mini chapter, Jer had a few months ago, I was kind of going through something similar where yeah. I was just like, right. yo, like I'm just trying to go on dates. Right. And then like, it was just pushing for these fucking dates and going just trying to play some mini golf you know <laughs> yeah no we didn't that would have been a fucking sick idea but um yeah and it was just like missing out on all the basic things that make me so absolutely irresistible and desirable in, intensely so in order to like go hang with people who i wasn't even sure like i guess you swing you never know but like fuck, yeah like I would have been the thing is for somebody to come in and to take my attention from my absolute arsenal of fucking best friends and amazing things that I could do. There's so much shit that I could do and there's so much shit I'm behind on. I'd love to make more music. I'd love to fucking finish this goddamn scholarship project that I've been trying to do for these kids for fucking 
almost five years now yeah and like i'm gonna not do that and instead i'm gonna go play mini golf and i get it that i'm human and like these things have to happen it's life man you gotta sacrifice you know, life like is mini like, golf as well as pro wrestling <laughs> <laughs> true and yeah so you know it's uh i wonder what our next parallel will be jer i mean the tricky place i find myself now is like dating is a little bit exhausting for me right like getting to that and through that initial stage of like getting to know you like, social you know, energy person. man it really is yeah. social energy and like i always thought that i was a social person because like I can be outgoing yeah. and like personable and all those things. Those are skills that I have. Turns out he's but... just charming. <laughs> but the thing is, I didn't realize how much I need to recharge my batteries. Oh, yeah. I was giving too much of my energy externally and wasn't spending enough time going inwards and like reflecting and all of these things. I told myself I was an introspective person, but I was more just an overthinker. And sure. I still, have, I still yeah, am. Yeah, that's that's oh. fair. That, that that hits. That hits right I there. Hits <laughs> yeah, dude. I yeah, I'm, I'm introspective for sure, <laughs> right? But like, uh, I like oh. it's that's a good one. More where like I actually go in and like. Right. I definitely still am an overthinker. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. it's like one of my biggest battles in my day to day. Yeah. Is like combating the overthinking. Yeah. But the dating thing is like I've never been into online dating. Has just never been for me hate it and like the thing is because i don't like texting and so getting to know a person over text and then where it's like you're swiping on a picture if it's tinder i haven't really used bumble or hinge or any of those uh, like other ones but i just the like brian said the social energy like getting over that initial like part of it is just like you're facing constant rejection all the time too that's true yeah yeah, that can be demoralizing i'm a sensitive boy and taking that fucking rejection all the time is not easy yeah, even when you get success, you get rejected. Well, that's the thing. Right? Like, you have to throw that line out there over yeah. and over and over again. And yeah. that's why, like, at the bars, it was easy because it was like, hey, on to the next one. Honestly. It's like in person, I could dance a little bit. I could go do my own thing, right. bounce around the bar, hang out with my friends. Like, it was a lot easier. But also in those situations, you're not – it's very rare that you're meeting, like, a quality person on a night out because you're not meeting the ideal version of that person and you're not presenting right right and you're also not your ideal right exactly (laughs) and so yeah it's a lot of fun but it's fleeting it's not anything like that's gonna last i mean i did i had gotten into like a couple like brief relationships from people i met at a bar where like we went out on a date after and all that but yeah a couple dates here and there and like they're fun met yeah i met a couple good people but rare (laughs) very rare and like dude when i was fucking my brief stint on online dating that yielded almost no fruit across three apps it's like yo did i actually spend an hour on this app today right yeah right the time investment it it feels weird right like dude if i spent an hour writing songs i would have fucking gotten way closer to getting fucking girls (laughs) (laughs) right yeah if you make yourself more attractive right what yeah like if i spent that hour fucking stretching if i spent that hour fucking reading if i spent that hour if i spent that hour reading the books i didn't know exist yet i would have deleted that shit right way son right um there was a great uh yeah just so great i mean at the same time with that one of the things that i'm running into now is like it's hard i find it difficult to meet people well without yeah. those things i mean like obviously covid is different yeah and i guess i'm speaking yeah in a covid <laughs> context yeah. but still where it's like yeah maybe i'm just like it's just a pay i guess it's just a patience thing really i mean like yeah. if if romantic mm-hmm. comedies have taught me anything like once they're back on join a pottery class dude because you're <laughs> basically you're basically guaranteed to meet the love of your life or like nice. a wine and painting class and there's dude. gonna be like some you know some like uh some girl there on her own kind of doing her own thing and she's a little bit different right but then she's gonna uh, teach you how to live and how to love again dude yes you know <laughs> I because because we should definitely uh, force all women into the rubric laid out by romantic comedies. 100%. Yes, uh, that's they they that's the they have to fit that rubric, and that's it. They they can't deviate from it. Uh, that's all I know. Rom-com. That's all I know. We're gonna make a tryhards rom com, and it's gonna be mini golf based. Damn, meets, meets the love of his life at mini golf. 
or breaks up and then season three is dark as fuck yeah how could she leave me yeah and then there's like a bunch of flashbacks where she never existed and pow is just like he's like banging the holes at mini golf (laughs) <laughs> yes. <laughs> 18 holes, baby. I, I was just concerned. I was just concerned that you guys hadn't put a dick joke in there yet. So ah, true, true. I had, yes, to, yes, yes, had yes. to had to get in there. Yeah. Yeah, I just do me and hope somebody's into it. And if they are, fucking that's cool because I'm mm-hmm. doing me. And if you're into me, then I'm into me too. So we have that in common. You're like you're doing you like say, you're doing please. you like like on camera or like like cam website or <sighs> something like that. Cams.com. I meant FTF. Hmm? face to face mm. oh you perverts mm-hmm. okay i mean like the more that i say shit like this i know that m- more and more like each day i feel like a fucking old man <laughs> living in a modern world where i'm like trying I mean, that's, to uh, that's how it works <laughs> but like oh. you're an older man every day but even people around our age are like entrenched in this shit and i'm just like Ugh, not for me like distancing myself from all of these things and sometimes yeah. i feel like Am I stepping outside of like the zeitgeist? I mean, you're you're also like you're you're seeing people engaged in in a, a degree of, of social uh, behavior uh, right. through your lens of them, which is social right. behavior, right? You don't see them when they're not being social, right? So maybe it's not as much energy as it looks like they're putting into it. Maybe it's actually just a small part of their life, right? But you don't see the whole picture. That's true. We're thinking about that. That's true. Um, Penis. <laughs> thank God we went a little long. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what they call me, a little long. Little. I mean, the way that I look at it now, I'm pursuing passions of mine. And I guess, I think I was talking to Pals about this the other day, but it's like listening to my intuition and living in accordance with what my intuition is saying has yielded me the most fruit. Not romantic, but just in life in general. True. Where it seems like everything is kind of clicking in right. a way where like I'm not going against uh, nature, I guess you could say. Or right. against whatever, I guess. Yeah, whatever. Um, how would I describe it? Like I'm a believer in like the universe and everything being connected in a way. And it's like, I'm in tune with like, you want to talk, you know, we're talking about like the timelines yeah. Yeah. branching. It's like, I'm walking like the timelines are converging now where I'm on the timeline of like the Jer and I was always supposed to be when I'm listening to my intuition, I'm following my passions and I'm doing these things. Right. You know what I mean? And when you're getting distracted by being lusty, exactly. And being completed by someone who's busty. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah. nothing wrong with a little bit of lust here or there. No, sure. definitely not. But if it becomes a distraction, that's when it's... Yeah. That's when it, it becomes, becomes a hindrance. Like, I think about it, it's like, shit, I could have gone on a date tonight or I could have fucking learned a new drill for my fucking soccer team that I coach. I think there's a place for both. It's just, you got... It's all about reps, right? But there's only so much primary balance. energy. I can't do them both. I do the drill and then I'm too tired to go on a date. Uh, I guess. Then it, then it comes down to, like, what are your priorities... And then become very clear about that and then really hunker down into those priorities and don't, you can't be wishy-washy about that shit then. Cause then you're kind of living like one foot in one foot out of different pursuits, I think. And that's something that I struggle with too. It's like, how many balls can I juggle? Yeah. It was like, dude, one of my favorite Ron Swanson quotes was like, you could half-ass two things or you could whole whole ass one, whole (laughs) ass one thing. And I I really like. I think there's some truth there. Ron Swanson is a modern day prophet. That's why <laughs> we whole ass this pod every single week. We really do. We really do. And I'm just, you know, it's it feels it feels like the right time here, boys. No it's way. fun. I'm getting talking practice because I don't do a lot of that outside of talking to like pal. <laughs> I noticed listening back to a few recent pods when I go into my little rants where I'm thinking about stuff yeah. I say like a lot oh do you me too I say like a lot and I told myself when I was listening to uh, a previous one I think today it's like I'm gonna be more mindful about how often I say like and I Ooh. can guarantee that I've said it a lot today 
I'm down to join you on that embarkment. I, I don't give I, a I fuck. Think... I'm I'm never going to improve. I'm already the best. So <laughs> oh, fuck that. I uh, I think yeah, it's it's hard to just slow down and like let your thought just like marinate for a sec because my brain's always bah. right. But it's powerful though those pauses when you leave the like away mm-hmm. and to say like take a moment to think about it. Just Haja doesn't <laughs> work that amazingly on a podcast where they don't really love to have dead air. But you can yeah. still But it's like practice, right? Blank canvas does uh make you look at what's you know going on. Like even a pause I'd be like, oh fuck. Even a pause <laughs> I'd think is my podcast skipping? You'd make me pay attention to the pod if it went quiet for a half second, you know? Mm. Maybe. Guerrilla marketing. <laughs> guerrilla guerrilla marketing to to train you to not say like Indeed. we're marketing is to that... gorillas chimpanzees orangutans you know untapped the whole, market the whole ape family reject modernity return to monkey <laughs> all right that's a embrace our ancestors return that's to monkey meme, right yeah absolutely <laughs> My friend showed me this meme. all you vegans are reverting be us monkey. back to gorilla life become style. become monkey <laughs> crazy <laughs> I went on our memes. It was really good. That's, I feel like that's that's a good place. To, it's a good starting point. Then yeah, you dude. Start to, you that's start some normie niche, shit. And then you start diving deep. Yeah. On like the more. Then you get the uh, qualities. The niche subreddits. You know, we're talking about meme history on our previous pod. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I could easily write a stand-up comedy routine just off of going on our memes. Just. Because if you so if you're making a stand-up routine and your material is what you find on r slash memes like you're gonna fucking bomb dude I, i'm not gonna if, mince okay, words on this what if you go on stage <laughs> with your phone and you're just pulling <laughs> memes uh, you bring up a slideshow okay uh, welcome to my my, my live slide. reddit reading <laughs> that's actually hilarious uh but what about that does anyone else subreddit never heard of it yeah, I don't know. Visited. You don't know that one, Ryan? I don't think so. What? It's just, does anyone else flip their pillow over when it before mm. they go to sleep? Oh, yeah, that sounds boring to me. One trillion upvotes, but the thing is, yeah, <laughs> I, I feel like I could transmute that material, material, material into, uh, into some good stand-up bits. But I mean, yeah. I'd love to see it. We can get it done. On that, does anyone else tip? You know, we're talking about reviews. Yeah. Right? And like, sometimes I'll watch something and be like, am I just, is it weird that they're doing that? Or is it weird that they did this? And then hearing somebody make a review that's like, wasn't it weird that they did that? I was yeah. Like, ah, it's like validating an opinion. Yeah, 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 for sure. Not just necessarily forming an opinion or influencing it, but it's like, oh, okay, I'm not crazy. Yeah, man. That is something valid that I noticed in that thing. Community. Community. Great TV show. It is a good TV show. Very well written. Very funny. I would say it's on my, it's in my top five of uh, influence. Wow. <laughs> Maybe not in my, uh, yeah, I would say there. influence for sure. I've gone back and watched just get some inspiration, things like that. It's just so clever. The first sure. season especially. Yeah, I yeah, love yeah. watching shows where the cast have good chemistry. Right. Yeah, I think that that's pretty universal. I think most people yeah, I, yeah, I guess so, are pretty right? into that. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Vital, 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 vital. <laughs> where you can like... It's almost like you're long for the ride. You're like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Dude, Speaking of chemistry, go ahead. the three of us equals dynamite, baby. Now that's chemistry right there. T N T. T N T. Regroup for pod next week. Yeah. All right. I'm down. All right, listeners. Um, just get the fuck out of here. Love you guys. Fuck off. Stay safe out there. And if this, 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 and if this.